Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Cranky Gun Reviews. It's been a couple weeks since I did any ammo updates, and realistically that's because I haven't done a whole lot of ammo shopping in the past couple of weeks. Uh, I also haven't done many videos in the past couple of weeks, and that was largely due to the fact that I got uh, pneumonia in both of my lungs. Not horrible, I caught it right when it was starting to spread into my lungs, got on some antibiotics and some steroids, was able to take care of it fairly quickly, and I'm pretty much fully recovered now, except for the fact I still get pretty tired by the end of the day, um, but I also just turned 40 a couple weeks ago, so maybe it has something to do with that as well. But anyway, let's get into the video. I'm going to show you guys what I've picked up for ammo over the last couple of weeks. Some decent deals, not terrific deals, but I think the prices that are out there are starting to be the new norm. Um, the good thing is places like Cabela's and Bass Pro have taken the restrictions off of some of their calibers as far as how much you can buy. So 9mm, 40 Smith & Wesson, 223 and 556 at Cabela's, you can go in there and buy as much as you want now. And largely because 556 and 223 especially, the prices have not come down much. I mean, most like Winchester White Box uh, 20 round packs of M193 or just standard 223 target ammo are still $12.99 a box, which is pretty expensive uh, considering that same ammo used to be roughly $7. Uh, probably two, two and a half years ago. So the 5.56 and 223 ammo prices, I haven't seen them come down anywhere, online, at the stores, anywhere. So I think the prices on 5.56 and 223 are going to kind of level out where they are right now, which stinks. I mean, you're talking like 60 cents a round, which is pretty stinking expensive for 223. You used to be able to get it for like 35 to 40 cents a round, so it's gone up pretty, uh, pretty high. But have been able to find some other ammo recently, so let's go check out what I got. So this is what I've picked up for ammo over the last two, two and a half weeks, roughly. Uh, starting on the left here, this is Federal Punch 22 Long Rifle, 29 grain. These are flat nose, high velocity 22 long rifle. These are slated for what they claim is a personal defense round. These are rated at 1,070 feet per second out of a two inch barrel. So these are made for like your LCP2 or uh, other small pistols that shoot 22 long rifle, like a Beretta 21A or something like that as well. So these are actually rated for handguns. Uh, if you watch Tools and Targets channel, he's tested these against just about every other type of 22 and these penetrate the best out of anything. So. Cabela's had these in stock. I think they were $10.99 or $11.99 a box. They are not cheap for 50 rounds, but considering what it is, it's very good ammo. I was able to pick up seven boxes of that stuff over the last couple of weeks. And uh, again, I buy what I can afford when I have a little bit of money so that I can stock up on ammo that I either shoot a lot or stuff that I know I need. So 22 self-defense ammo. Again, quote unquote self-defense, but if you're going to carry it in a revolver or you're going to carry it in a small 22 compact pistol like an LCP2, then you're going to need something that's a little bit higher velocity. Moving on here, Winchester Silver Tip. I've been picking up, as they have it in the store, this 147 grain jacketed hollow point. I've tried these out in a couple of my handguns and so far they work really well. They look cool. Obviously, they have a silver tip on them. It's obviously not silver. I don't know exactly what they're plated in, if they're plated in nickel or something like that. But they look silver, especially compared to that brass cartridge. Uh, the 147 grain I've been getting more recently, because I have a bunch of 115 grain jacketed hollow point in like the Remington UMC brand and uh, some other brands. So I've been trying to pick up some 147 grain. I think it's a pretty good defensive round. Uh, I haven't done any like water jug tests or anything with this, but there are tons and tons and tons of videos out there with ballistic gel and water jug tests and things like that. With these, if you wanna look at them, go ahead and do a search. Next, Ammo Incorporated. This is also nine millimeter, 115 grain jacketed hollow point. And I bought a box of this and took it home because I wanted to see what it looked like. You're really not supposed to open these up in the store. So I bought a box and took it home and I looked at the rounds and again, these Ammo Incorporated rounds look very similar to a SIG V-Crown round. So 
I've had good luck with the ammo incorporated as far as reliability. Every one goes off. Knowing that these um, rounds are 115 grain jacketed hollow point, again, they look like a SIG V-Crown hollow point. Uh, haven't done any testing with these yet as far as shooting them, but I'm fairly certain they're going to function very well in my carry handguns. And I also like, you know, again, the weight and the bullet. Um, these are pretty hot rounds, 1160 feet per second, which is also good for self-defense round because if you're shooting it out of a short barrel, you want these to expand. Again, the Winchester silver tip, if you look at the ballistics on these, 147 grain at 1,010 velocity at the muzzle. Again, I don't know what length barrel that's measured at. It's probably measured out of like a four and a half or a five inch barrel. So shorter barrels, you'll obviously have less velocity. But this is a pretty good round, especially at 147 grain. With the 115 grain, you can propel them a little bit faster because the round is a little bit lighter. So I expect that these would have some pretty good performance. And I have not seen too many reviews of the ammo incorporated hollow points. There's a few of them out there. Again, I think Tools and Targets has done some videos on these. Um, but again, if you're searching for ballistic information on these, if you want to see a gel test, I don't do that yet. Maybe someday I'll have a budget where I can go out and buy gel and things like that, but right now I don't. So I just test them for functionality in my gun and it's a hollow point. It will over penetrate or it will penetrate less than a round nose regardless. Moving on, Herder's 410 bore rifled slugs in two and a half inch shells. I had bought a whole bunch of these a couple of years ago. I don't know, I probably had six or eight boxes of these a couple of years ago, but with my uh, Mossberg 500 shotgun in 410 and my break action uh, Stevens 301 shotgun and my Smith & Wesson Governor and my Bond Arms Derringer, I've been shooting up quite a bit of these rounds. So just happened to show up at the store when they were stocking the shelf yesterday he had one box of these, so I grabbed four of the, you know, 25 round boxes of these things out of the, the case that he had. Grabbed those, I think they were $17.99 for uh, 25 rounds. Actually, I got my receipt right here, let me check. They were $17.99 for 25 rounds. So again, not cheap, but 410's never been cheap. And for these 1,830 feet per second rifled slugs, I've hit a target at 50 yards out of both the Governor and the Bond Arms Derringer with these, and they're great out of a shotgun. So again, being that they're two and a half inch, I can shoot these out of the Derringer and out of the um, Governor. So, not the Governor, yeah, the Governor. Um, so I grab as much 410, two and a half inch shells as I can. Moving on, same thing with these. I happened to show up, when I showed up yesterday, he was putting out this 410. He had one case of these 38 special full metal jacket rounds. This box I bought two weeks ago. This box I bought on uh, Tuesday this week when I was going into the office. So I have another 200 rounds of this. And again, some people say, why are you buy so much of this stuff? Well, if you saw my last video when I went out to the range with my new Smith & Wesson military and police revolver, and I also was out there on the same day with the Charter Arms Undercover and my Taurus Model 85, I went through about 150 rounds of ammo. So I'm buying to refill what I shot plus a little bit more. That's always been my mantra on, on ammo. If you go out and you shoot 100 rounds, buy 150 or 200 rounds. That way you slowly build up your stock and you're never short on ammo. So I got another 200 rounds of that. This is actually the cheapest I found this. Cabela's had these for $60 a box. Everywhere I found them online is about three to four, or sometimes $5 a box more than that for this same ammo. So I feel pretty fortunate that I've been able to get a few boxes of this in the last month or so. And then last but not least, um, my 40th birthday was a couple of weeks ago and I got a $100 Cabela's gift card. They had this stuff, the price dropped down to $95 a box. It's 150 rounds of M855 Green Tip Winchester 556. And I have an okay amount of this stuff already. I probably have four or 500 rounds of this stuff already. But this, believe it or not, the 855 is the cheapest 556 I've been able to find recently. This stuff I think was around 63 cents per round. It's still not cheap. But when you get into shooting any 556 or 223 right now, like I said earlier, you find a box of 20 rounds, it's 13 bucks. That's the cheapest you can find it anywhere. Even my online supplier, Target Sports USA, 
they haven't had it any cheaper than that. The 556 has actually been a, a buck or two more than the 223, and they haven't had a whole lot in stock. Um, you know, going back even a year, not even a year, like eight months, they had some Igman 223 in stock at Target Sports USA for $8 a box for 20 rounds. That was a phenomenal price. That was almost back to pre-pandemic pricing. I had bought a couple hundred rounds of that, but I shot it all. So I wish I had bought like a thousand or 1500 rounds of that stuff when they had it, knowing that the prices were going to even out at you know, $13 for 20 rounds. That's kind of ridiculous in, in the pricing, but that's what it's been for the last four or five months. I don't know if the prices are going to come back down on 223 and 556, but the 855 in these 150 round packs is the cheapest I've found it. It functions pretty well in my uh, Mini 14. I don't think I've actually shot any of this out of my AR-15 yet but I will soon. It's another range video. I need to get my AR-15 back out and do some more ammo testing with it, but again, that nice green tip. These are a steel core quote-unquote penetrator round. The government tried banning these a couple of years ago because they say they're armor-piercing. Well, they're mildly armor-piercing, but they're not like an incendiary armor-piercing. They don't have tungsten cores. It's just a steel core, so I have a bunch of these, um, and again, I stock up when I can, so that's what my ammo hunt for the last couple of weeks has been. And for those of you guys who complain about people not doing certain videos on YouTube or not shooting certain things or whatever, you should go out and actually try to figure out how much money somebody like me spends on a video. So if you think about my Military and Police 38 video that I went out and shot a couple of weeks ago, like I said, I, sh I shot about 150 rounds of 38 special in the combined video between the military and police the the Taurus model 85 and the charter arms undercover this is $30 for 50 rounds so I spent $90 in about a half an hour making that video so I get a little bit irritated when people complain about content on YouTube where they're watching the content for free you're commenting for free, you're not paying for anything, and you're criticizing everybody. I understand why guys like Paul Harrell have to put a disclaimer on everything they do, because there's a lot of really entitled, annoying people out there that just show up and make comments like they're experts and put you down for things you do or don't do and why you should do something else. They don't give any constructive criticism a lot of times. They don't provide any of their own content they don't explain why they say what they say or what background they have and you know making a whatever claim that they make they're not there when they they say some of these things and they make assumptions that you're being unsafe or something like that when you're in a video sometimes but they're getting free entertainment don't complain about it have some constructive criticism and don't be a keyboard warrior that's kind of my public service announcement for the day. Just don't be a jerk when it comes to watching videos. Be nice, be kind. People like myself and others, and I don't even put as much effort into my videos as a lot of people do, but it gets irritating. The larger my channel gets, the more people I have that say I'm doing things wrong or I'm being unsafe in my videos. You're not there when I'm at the range. You don't know that there's usually nobody else at the range. The guns are always pointed in a safe direction. I'm not pointing them at myself, putting my finger on the trigger. I am being safe and I'm spending a lot of money to make these videos. So again, just a public service announcement, try to be a little bit kinder. And if you wanna be a jerk, go ahead. Everybody else will see it. They'll know what you say and they just won't listen to you. Thanks for watching another edition of Cranky Gun Reviews and listening to me ramble on about a little bit. And uh, again, if you find ammo, I would say, still, if you can afford a box or two of ammo when you go into the store, still buy it, still stock up. You really never know what's gonna happen. I've talked about my philosophy on storing ammo before and how much I think I need. Again, my needs are different than your needs, but if you like what I say, then go ahead and do it. Otherwise, make your own mind up about what's right for you. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. God bless America. Make sure you support your two-way rights. Get out there and shoot. And you remember, somebody tells you to give up some of your freedom for the greater good. You remind them that freedom is the greater good.